We're back to New World next week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com, regulated fairly harshly in many countries of the world. We've got that story and a whole lot more here just on a jam-packed episode of New World Next Week, episode 369. It has also been a busy week or two for America's Next Top President, but you're bound to be busy when you're continuing the tyrannical policies of the last 18 years. It's got to wear down even the slickest of reality stars. So our first segment here, James, will essentially be just kind of an update on the old Trump train. We can call it 8 d Deep state grand chessboard updates. If you like, Trump says Russia has to get out of Venezuela as that situation continues to heat up. The Washington Examiner reports Venezuela becoming Trump's version of Obama's Syria. So speaking of Syria, I just saw the tweet. I think it's less than an hour ago from Syria girl, partisan girl. Ongoing right now, Israel and the U.S. jointly bombing Syria, Aleppo. This is what Trump signing the Golan Heights deal meant. And that's right. Trump signs declaration recognizing Israel's sovereignty over disputed Golan Heights. And again, these things have all just been going on pretty much in the last week. A lot of things happen when you take a week off from New World next week. I think, I guess, James, the cultists, the, the obsessives will all say it's just the, you know, deep state, you know, more dimensions being added to it. But I think even broken clock Matt Taibbi knows when the jig is up, Russia Gate is WMD times a million which seems to be the original headline of his article, which got kind of slightly altered. Iraq war faceplant damaged the reputation of the press. Russiagate destroyed it. And of course, everything we say and play always included down in our show notes news that special prosecutor Robert Mueller headed home without issuing new charges, a death blow for the reputation of the American news media, as has long been figured. The former FBI chief's independent probe resulted in multiple indictments and convictions, but no presidency wrecking conspiracy charges or anything that would meet the layman's definition of collusion with Russia. The key detail in all the stories about the end of the Mueller investigation, best simply expressed by the New York Times, quote, a senior Justice Department official said that Mr. Mueller would not recommend new indictments. The old gray lady tried to soften the emotional blow for the millions of Americans trained in these years to place hopes for the overturn of the Trump presidency in Mueller. As with most press coverage, there was a little pretense that the Mueller probe was supposed to be a neutral fact-finding mission as opposed to religious allegory with Mueller cast as the hero sent to slay the monster. Literally becoming sort of a religious figure during the last few years, votive candles even being sold in his image. And of course... General Electric, Comcast, SNL, NBC, Comedy Garbage, cast members singing, Mueller, please come through, because the only option is a coup? So, in conclusion, collusion with Israel, yes, collusion with Russia, not so much, James. Exactly right. And, of course, uh, who had a bigger influence on the 2016 election, Israel or Russia? Hmm, I wonder. Um, Yeah, Ding dong, the witch is dead. This Russiagate conspiracy is finally deader than a doornail. It is an ex- conspiracy theory at this point, right? It is proven wrong. So now all the Russia gators who've been screaming their head off and bloviating for the last two years about nonsense and drivel will tuck their tails between their legs and gracefully retire. Right, Maddow? Right, all right, all you purveyors of this ga- nonsense and garbage? Oh, no, of course not. They're going to double down. Um, so this is a time that we should at least, I mean, sure, a little pat on the back for all the anti-Russia gators who called out the emperor wearing no clothes on this conspiracy theory nonsense, because that is in order after two years of suffering all the Russian bot nonsense that uh, people have been smearing around for the last couple of years in this uh, neo-McCarthyite hysteria. But there's a few caveats to this. Unfortunately, the Russia gators have won this conversation in a few senses. They've steered it in a few dangerous directions, one of which excellently pointed out by former Corbett Report guest Michael Krieger, who I hope to be talking to in the very near future about one of his recent uh, articles up on libertyblitzkrieg.com. Russiagate might be dead, but big tech censorship is here to stay. Unfortunately, very true. On the back of all this Russiagate hysteria, of course, we've had the entire conversation about how can big tech crack down on all these people who aren't falling in line because clearly they're Russian bots. Oh, they're not Russian bots? Whatever. We still need to crack down on them. So unfortunately, that narrative is going to continue whether or not Russiagate uh, uh, continues from this point. Secondarily, as some of the anti-Russiagators are pointing out, it gives Trump and Trump's supporters cover for basically anything for the next couple of years. Look, it was a witch hunt. He's completely exonerated. End of story. Uh, Fake news. Anything you hear from the MSM is wrong. Therefore, Trump is right about everything. 
wait, hold on, wait, this is the same Trump that's bombing Syria as we speak, this 100% in uh, Make Zionist Israel Great Again, is uh, starting, as the examiner points out, starting his own, uh, Obama had Syria, well, Trump has Venezuela, and he's going at that 100%. But now all of those very important issues, the, the withdrawal from the INF, the brink of nuclear war, all of this, is going to be swept aside because because of this stupid ph phony narrative that's been implanted. And the third layer of this cake, well now also Russia and Putin is going to be absolved of this from his supporters' eyes because look, now you see, there was nothing to do with the election. Therefore, Russia and Putin are great, as we said all along, and there's nothing wrong about what's happening in Russia. Uh, hold on, that's not how that argument works, and we're going to get into that in our next story. I, and there's just I could even pile in more uh, just uh, the the fake left and right that you're talking about. I just saw even earlier drones killed a dozen plus civilians in Somalia last weekend, a place most people wouldn't go. Oh, that's right. That's one of the wars that Obama added on to one of Bush's wars that Trump has continued to carry on. One of the other flips to that, I think Matt Al has lost like half a million viewers as the Russiagate wheels have pretty much completely fallen off. James, when I was in my pretty much my least favorite place in the world on Monday, the airport. I did snap a couple of pictures of the fake newsstands USA Today referred to back in the day by Jello Biafra as the American Pravda. USA Today proclaimed no conspiracy. Meanwhile, CIA Time magazine already moved on to warning Pepsi against trying to impeach Coke. So it's really interesting that the, you know, it's talking about, oh, maybe the, maybe a coup is the next move. So our second segment of stories here on New World Next Week, Putin signs fake news, internet insults bill into law. This coming from the Moscow Times, Putin has signed a controversial set of bills that make it a crime to disrespect the state and spread fake news online. The legislation will establish punishments for spreading information that, quote, exhibits blatant disrespect for the society, government, official government symbols, constitution or governmental bodies of Russia, end quote. Online news outlets and users that spread fake news will face fines of up to half a million rubles. That's twenty two, twenty three thousand 23,000 in U.S. fiat dollars for repeat offenses, insulting state symbols and the authorities, including, of course, Mr. Putin will carry a fine of up to 300,000 rubles and 15 days in jail for repeat offenses. The Kremlin, however, denied this legislation amounts to censorship, hilariously pointing out that, quote, this fear of fake news, insulting and so on is regulated fairly harshly in many countries of the world, including Europe. It is therefore, of course, necessary to do it in our country too, end quote, Kremlin spokesman said. So James, I guess like all those evil Nazis who ran the eugenics ops, they all seem to say, you, you all right, I learned it by watching you. James. Yeah, yeah, what about ism? And that's exactly the point. Just as not the false flag of 9-11 and the insulting, the, the resulting, <laughs> insulting, war on terror, uh, war of terror, uh, was a blank check for every authoritarian regime in the world to, to say, hey, anyone who opposes us as terrorists and we get to deal with them the way America deals with terrorists. Well, now, in this age where the fake news... Uh, specter has been raised. Well, now then, anything that's against any authoritarian regime anywhere in the world is fake news and will censor and outlaw and fine you. And you have to be regulated and licensed by the government in order to say anything in the U.S. and in Russia and everywhere else. It's coming everywhere. And here it is in Russia. So to all the people who think that Putin is the great savior of civilization and blah, blah, blah. No, he's another authoritarian thug like all of them. I am not Team Trump. I am not Team Putin. I am not Team Abe. I'm not Team Trudeau. I'm not Team any of these thugs that are only in it for the power over other people. And uh, they're bloodthirsty tyrants, as far as I'm concerned, and I do not bow down or supplicate to any of them. They all are authoritarian regimes that will do anything in their power to stop opposition and stop people speaking freely. And here's another example of it. We've got a whole, you know, sexy batch of them still still popping up here in the States. They get on the covers of Vanity Fair and such because they all are vying to to grab that crown to be the new authoritarian with the shiny, happy, smiling face. James, I think a interesting related one to this second story. Facebook, Axios and NBC paid a guy named Ed Sussman 
to whitewash Wikipedia pages, essentially becoming just a nonstop Wikipedia sort of it's the whole world of you can argue and the talk and the discussion pages about what becomes, you know, part of the, the bastion of truthiness. And of course, there are folks out there being paid by news agencies to help cover up their own misdoings, like ignoring serial sex abusers that they have on their payroll. Whew. Our third and final story this week on our uh, barn busting return. It's a, it is a bombshell episode, James. The tide is turning. The walls are closing in. <laughs> EU Copyright Directive, it's called, is going to try and hold online platforms liable for users' copyright infringement. So basically, there's a larger story of what this whole new set of EU laws are going to mean. The EU's divisive new copyright plan explained from an article from Wired UK from going back last fall, at least maybe even a couple of falls ago, of course. Because it takes a little while to cram legislation down people's throats. The interesting thing comes in the fight over this copyright directive. MEPs say they mistakenly voted for Articles 11 and 13. EU says, too bad. So about that terrible vote by the EU Parliament to approve the copyright directive, including the dangerous Articles 11, which is essentially the link tax, and Article 13, requiring online platforms like YouTube to filter or remove copyrighted material. The key vote was whether to allow amendments that could have deleted those articles. They're voting on what to vote on, basically. It failed by five votes, 317 to 312. Soon after the vote was finalized, a few of the MEPs, members of European Parliament, who voted against the plan for amendments said they voted incorrectly and meant to vote for the amendments in order to get rid of Articles 11 and 13. Apparently, someone changed the vote order, which threw them off. Quote, what happened was that in the middle of a sitting meeting, it was decided to make an adjustment in the order of voting in itself. This did not appear in a clear way where the president was also somewhat confused, end quote. Indeed, soon after that, some others admitted to voting incorrectly, believing they were voting for something else. A few hours later, the EU put up the official voting record, which includes an astounding 13 MEPs who said they voted incorrectly, all told that would have shifted and allowed to vote on the amendments. A slim majority, the law would have been opened up to deleting Articles 11 and 13. In other words, whoever changed the order of the vote maybe pulled a fast one and got the EU copyright directive approved. If you're wondering what can be done now, as TechCrunch writes, the answer is not much, as according to the EU, quote, MEPs may still issue corrections to their votes in case of mistakes, which will, however, not change the outcome. James? Ah, uh, the European Union. Government by and for the people. Asterisk. The people means a select group of clique lawmakers in Brussels. Uh, yeah, oh, th this is a representative democracy the way it's meant to be done. Ooh, let's change the order of voting order. What are we voting on? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, what, what did I just vote? Oops. No, wait, I didn't mean to vote that. Too bad. And guess what? Unlike, say, I don't know, the Lisbon Treaty, hey, Ireland, you voted the wrong way, let's do that again. Or uh, unlike, say, Brexit, hey, England, you voted the wrong way, let's do that again. Uh, this time, well, I don't care if you voted the wrong way, it's the right, it's the right answer, so we'll accept it. Um, this is exactly how the game works. It is a game. Um, anyone who believes in this charade is... It doesn't have two brain cells to rub together by this point. Um, on the more substantive point of Article 13 and what it is, obviously we'll throw in some links to some material that goes through it in a brief nutshell, but Article 11 and Article 13 being about copyright, being about the link tax, which we've talked about before on the program, so we'll throw in a flashback to that on New World next week. But long story short, um, I'm not, I don't think this is the final nail in the coffin. This is part of a process and a procedure, and now all the individual member states of the EU have to implement it in their own laws, in their own countries, and they'll enforce it differently, and there will be different ways of uh, interpreting these laws. So it's not like this is the be-all and end-all, but it is another link in the chain. And just like SOPA and PIPA and all of these things, that people came together and defeated at the last moment, they'll just keep coming and keep coming and keep coming and keep coming until they get what they want. And uh, hmm, what, what's, what's the response to that? What's the answer to that? I'm uh, open to suggestions, but I, I, I think that remaining in the EU is probably not for the good of anyone in the European Union right now, let alone those in the UK. 
James and I, as I had uh, announced two weeks ago in our previous episode, I was going to take some time off and head off to a big rock and roll festival. I can pretty honestly admit coming back to this giant, just big old mess. It was like, uh, can I go back to rock and roll camp? I will be back on the air streaming news, music, memes, and more on April 1st. No fool. And, and of course... James, you and I have been each doing this for I, I don't even know if we added our years up now. It's it's we're, we're, it's 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 been a while, and a lot of the platforms are difficult. Lose a lot of audience because they get mad at this place or at this other place. And as we've been basically saying, I don't care how you support us as long as you support us. And I've got all my ways at mediamonarchy.com slash join. It has been a pleasure to get back with you, buddy. That's right. And corporatereport.com slash members for people looking to support my work. Uh, yeah, a lot of people have been dropping off because they, they're they mad at this platform and that platform. Again, doesn't matter how you support us. Just support us. Uh, you make it possible. So uh, to all of you out there, thank you for uh, sticking around. And we will see you again on The New World next week. Next week, and of course, both James and I will have a regular podcast coming out in the near future. Talk to you again soon. All right. Thanks, buddy. <laughs>